Today I'm bringing a psychic medium to see if they can help solve a Jane Doe cold case that has more questions than answers. I didn't give her any information about why we're meeting up. I just asked if she could simply help with something that was important using her gifts. This is to ensure a completely real and authentic response. In fact, she didn't even know we were meeting up at a cemetery until now. What she told me will shock you. A few months back, I shared a story of a Jane Doe who was found in the Western New York region nearly 40 years ago. On the winter morning of December 6, 1983, her body was discovered laying in a ditch along the eastern bound lane of Interstate 17 in Chautauqua County. Several clues were left behind, including a handwritten note in her coat pocket, as well as clothes not even available in the U.S., pointing to her not being from around here. Just about every lead, though, has turned up empty. Missing person reports showed no identifying matches. But the worst part? No one has ever claimed her or named her. No family member, no friend, after all these years. Being that she's never been identified, that really kind of sticks with you because you would think this day and age, somebody's got to miss her somewhere. I know that there's a lot of you that followed up on this case, tried to help solve it, and there's a lot of questions, especially about DNA profiles, that we want to ask Christy Lyons, which is the detective that's handling this case. I am here a little bit early. I know Tessa and Nick did have a long drive. They put some really pretty flowers out here for everybody. Very nice. I'm gonna be so mad if they took my crucifix because I said that once her murder was solved, I'm gonna take the crucifix back. But hey, I got another crucifix if I gotta leave another one. There she is right there. And someone did take my crucifix. But uh, it was probably maintenance workers. Kind of their job to clean these guys up there you go mrs jane doe i hate that name by the way so i know her name is different i know she has the most beautiful name ever before tessa and nick arrived i sat down and spent some time alone with jane doe talking to her asking her to please help bring more light to her case so she can finally rest peacefully she doesn't have any flowers i'm sorry i didn't bring you flowers today i'm laying in bed last night and as a medium, like, when you go to sleep, I shut down because I always say it's like a, like mediums are like a light in the dark. So if you're on, you're like a light and they come to you. Last night I was like overtired. I was just with the kids and I was kind of on. And as I laid in bed and you could ask him, like, I was so overwhelmed. I kept feeling this woman and I kept saying, I hear them. I hear them. This woman came to me and she was like yelling and I felt this anxiety. Wait a minute. A woman? A woman. And she was like freaking out anxiety to the point where he felt my anxiety and he's like you know are you okay what's going on I'm like I don't know I just keep picking up this woman she's yelling I'm like she won't stop and then I heard a little girl and she was like crying and but then she was humming and singing so I kept getting these different emotions and I felt like they were connected somehow but I was tired so I wasn't really tuning in so I was like you got to go right now not right now and I kind of shut it down and it wasn't until we started driving here that I was like, oh my God, I think it has something to do with today because then I started flashing back. And I don't know anything about what we're doing. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I didn't tell you anything. You didn't tell me anything. I just know we're in a cemetery. But I knew it was connected. And then I started seeing flashes as we were driving here, like through Jamestown. I started getting flashes in my head of different things. So I don't know anything about what we're gonna do. I see that you keep looking over there. I do. And uh, that's kind of funny because that's where we're going. Over here. Yeah. Okay. And you're looking over there. Yeah, I'm very drawn over here. Yeah. yeah. So I want you to kind of go to the spot and right. tell, just kind of tell me what you is. feel. Can I just go find it? Yeah, just go. You know what? I, I'm not even going to tell you where it's at. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if we can find it. Tessa isn't just any medium, though. She's highly respected, passionate about helping others, and extremely gifted at what she does. Even though she has no idea what I'm going to ask her to help me with, she has past experiences aiding detectives in criminal investigations involving missing persons. There's a woman. And it, what's distracting to me, if this makes sense, is um, I keep seeing like these visuals and like running and, and things like that, so it's hard for me to pinpoint. But is it over? Like I keep feeling like over it's right here. Okay. It's right here. Where? It's the smallest marker. Oh, okay. And she doesn't have a name. Oh my God. Okay. So she's buried here, but she doesn't have a name? She was buried here. So this woman was found. She was also known as Ellery Doe. God, okay. I, I don't know. I feel like a really bad, like, impact. 
Like I keep, oh my God, I got chills. I know it's like hot out here and I have chills up my arm. I feel like she would have an accent. You know, what's interesting to me is she feels like she'd be close to my age. So this is like at the time of her death. Like I feel like her and I have similarities in a way. So I don't know what that means. Like she's, um, she has dark hair. Are you Italian? I'm Italian. Well, there was some connection to her possibly being Italian. But okay. they didn't know that. Okay, because yeah. there's like an accent she kept talking, but she, but I keep getting like so I don't know if it's just like the dark hair, my age for sure. She keeps How old are you? I'm 33. Oh wow, they did say that she was between 30 and 39. Okay, I would say probably close to my age, if I had to guess. Um, but there's the anxiety that I was feeling last night is kicking up. So I don't know what the connection to a bridge is, but there's a bridge. Like I keep seeing I'm running. So I don't know if I was on this bridge, if I was her, because what, what ends up happening is, is I start taking on her emotions and I see things that are playing out with her and I just see her on this bridge. And I jump out of like a truck of some sort, like I jump out. So I don't know if she was traveling, but she was not the one driving. So like this wouldn't be her vehicle. This was not something that like would be hers. She jumps out and she starts running, but then somebody's coming after her. So she was definitely murdered. An accident, this was not anything like this. This was like somebody going after her because the anxiety that I feel right now is like, I'm scared. So she's running and then I see um, this bridge and then there's like a ditch. Oh my God. There's a ditch. Do you think this is connected to what you were feeling last night? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, now that I'm picking up on it, yeah. That anxiety just came like rushing back. Everything Tessa has said has been spot on and connected to our Jane Doe. It's almost as if she knows her. It's kind of scary, but amazing. The anxiety that I felt last night, and she was yelling. That's why I was telling Nick, I was like, she's yelling and I can't go to sleep, but she was yelling and I don't know if I was just picking up on the events that played out because now I'm seeing her running and yelling like, help me. So somebody was after her. Well, that's funny because one of the gunshot wounds was to the back as if she was running. Oh, remember I said I felt the, remember I felt the impact? Yeah. And I said it was like, oh my God, there was an impact. So you didn't even know it was a gunshot. No. So there, yeah, it was a gunshot. Okay. There was a couple gunshots. Oh, there was okay. one in the mouth, I believe one in the chest and one in the back as if she was running away. And what's funny is where she was found dead was in a ditch and it was oh right by a bridge. Like you are dead on. You are the real deal. 100%. <laughs> but I didn't come here to test you. I came right, here for your help. But I, I also didn't know why I was here. <laughs> right. So that's weird. Well, but now, you're, now you know why. She is yelling out to us to help solve her murder that's been, it's been 40, almost 40 years. Did she have a daughter? They found her with an IUD. That was one of the reasons why they were able to determine that she was not from the United States because they didn't have IUDs in the United States at that time. And there was only very few countries, European countries, some parts of Canada that had IUDs at the time. Oh, wow. After they did some investigating, they said that she had at least one child. The child today is missing a mother. She has no name. It starts with an S. There's Starts like, with an S. Yeah, there's like an S name. I'm trying to ask for more, like if they could give me more. What? We could take our time if you want. We could like sit here. Well, she was scared. So like whatever happened to her, she was scared. And, and I think the anxiety of like, it's weird. It gave me the impression that like I got into this truck because somebody offered me a ride. And it's like I need to get from point A to point B. And I trusted this person, but then things went bad pretty quickly for her so i see her jumping out of this vehicle and that's when the anxiety kicks up is like i gotta get away and you think she may have had a little girl i do and one of the reasons i think so is because when i was feeling her last night she there was a little girl and i kept remember i said she was like humming and kind of singing i'm gonna go with my intuition here but what i feel like is you know in those moments that people talk about like my life flashes before my eyes when things happen and it's almost like in her moments of running away from this person she's hearing her daughter singing to her like like that's what comes to her so i don't know if that's what she because i don't feel that the daughter's dead i don't feel that she i feel like she's still living but what i think i picked up on was her going to something's gonna happen to me my life is flashing before my eyes the most important thing is here and i hear her humming and singing to me and it's weird because you could ask nick like last night i'm laying there and i heard humming and I'm like I thought it was our kids I was like why is somebody singing are the kids awake and there's nobody awake so I think I think she has a daughter the events that played out I, I keep asking because what I'd really like to know is like who is this guy who was this you know I don't know if it was just a, a person passing by truck driver they did um, say that it, it could have possibly been a truck driver 
I don't know how deep you want me to get with it, but he was not good to her. Like, I feel like he would have done something to her. I feel like clothes would have been removed. Like, I don't feel that this was good at all. I feel like her soul it, it is at peace, but I think that she wants somebody to figure it out. Like, she needs closure and she wants somebody to figure it out. As like a mother and like the fact that she would identify with me, dark hair, Italian, close to age, I have kids, like it literally makes me choked up thinking about it because she, there's so much emotion behind this whole situation. Can I show you a picture of her? Yeah. Oh, you have a picture of her? I do have a picture of her. Oh my God. I want to say Serena or like Sabrina. Oh. Serena, Sabrina, like something along those lines. Something that sounds similar, put it that way. Since meeting up at the Sunset Hill Cemetery, Tessa keeps mentioning the name Serena or Sabrina, saying it could be either Jane Doe's first name or her daughter's. This is going to help out tremendously when looking up missing persons. It's just gone way too long overdue to being solved. And they're still working. It's a still open case here in Jamestown. The man who did this had a record. What she's showing me right now is she's, she's showing me that he had a criminal record. And I don't know why I keep wanting to reach into my pocket, like um, wanting to pull paper out of my pocket. Well, you know that she was found with something in her pocket. Okay, because yeah. she, she just made me reach into my pocket and pull out, like, obviously I'm not, but I see pulling out a paper. Can I show you the paper that was found on her? Yeah. So this is a paper that was found, I believe, in her coat pocket. It was letterhead from a hotel in Vancouver. Oh, my God. Okay. But when detectives went and interviewed all the workers there, they said they'd never seen a woman that matched her description. The man in the truck was not from here, though. He's from over there. Maybe he was from Vancouver. Yeah, he was from over there, is what she's saying. That's why she said there's a connection between the man and then the location that would be on here. He was from there, and it was almost like he passed through but went back. So it was easy for him to get away with this. He wouldn't have been found here. And like, so there's a connection to him going back. So this would be Vancouver. I don't think she was there either. She doesn't make me feel like she was there at all. I feel like he would have pulled out something or she found it in the truck or something along those lines and wrote stuff down because I think he was trying to be friendly with her when she first got into the vehicle. So, Do you think she was hitchhiking and met him that way? So it wasn't somebody that she knew for a long time? No, no, not at all. She was definitely hitchhiking. And what I just picked up was that, I don't know if she knew somebody out this way, like, I feel like I'm trying to meet up with somebody that I do know. Like, I'm going to you. So oh. she's, like, on her way to something, and he made it seem like I'll bring you there. It's on my way. But he had no intention of doing that. Because it's weird. Like, when I see this area, I'm going through Jamestown, and, like, I've obviously driven through, didn't know about her. But now that I'm picking up on her, I don't believe she's from here at all. No. Nor do I think her daughter would be around this area either. Do you think it would help you any more going to the actual location where... You got the vision of the bridge and the ditch? Actually, yeah. It would? Normally when I do things, I will go to the location of where things happened and took place. Is it far from here? Um, It's maybe like a 10, 15 minute ride up on Route 86. I think I remember how to get there. <laughs> when I see things from the past, I think of it as like uh, muddy footprints that somebody leaves, right? It's residual energy. If you think about it, her body's here, but anything that would have happened to her did not happen here. There's no muddy footprints here. You see what I mean? But if you go to the location where it did happen, she's left some muddy footprints there for somebody like me to pick up on. But I didn't hear anything. I'm just letting you know I was up there wandering. I love cemetery. Yeah, I was wondering where you were, Nick. I was up there wandering <laughs> the top of the hill, <laughs> and it's the first time I've been able to get like exercise. I've been all these haunted locations and shit, so I, it was nice to get out in the sun. Honestly, I'm trying to work nice on to my tan. It's nice to get exercise in the cemetery. <laughs> but last night, we're about to go to sleep. I had an eight-hour drive. I've been filming constantly for Death Walker. We're laying in bed, and suddenly she goes, I'm hearing voices. She's like, she basically shut me up. She was like, Shh, stop talking. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? I, I started thinking I was hearing something because stuff happens in our house all the time. We just have like a weird paranormal, you know, our whole family is just embedded in the paranormal and supernatural since we were like little kids. We both had near death experiences. I don't know if she told you she almost died when she was four. Whoa. I did when I was almost yeah. eight. 
ripped open my arm right here. Almost oh died. Oh my god! Didn't she, know that. She was in the hospital for months. Um, and I'm glad you guys are here. Yeah, we were meant to be, but we crossed paths. It's like soulmate, like connection, you know. And she is like a lighthouse in the dark. Things will just come to her. And I'm not joking. She has the ability to tap in. Last night, she was very vulnerable going to sleep because she started hearing somebody talking. She could hear conversations, somebody like talking, and she kept telling me, hold on, I hear that, you don't hear that? And I'm like, I don't hear it, but then I started getting goosebumps, which means I felt something close by, but I was so tired that I was like, look, I can either get up and interfere with their conversation. I was like, let me just walk in the room where they're conversating to just like squash whatever's happening so we can go to sleep. And she started talking. Uh, to spirits, I guess whoever was there. So yeah, we haven't even told him yet. I no, I, I, I know nothing. Told, <laughs> yeah. No, he, you didn't hear the conversation. But if you remember last night, I was picking up on a woman, and the member I kept saying, "There's a little girl, and she's singing," and I thought it was the kids. Yeah. Well, there is a woman. That's why we're here. There's a woman and an unmarked grave. It's a Jane Doe, and they think that she had a child. Well, they they believe for sure, right? That 100%, she had at least one hundred percent had a child. I remember last night the anxiety was yes. like really bad with me. Yep. She was murdered. Wait, who who are we even talking about? Because I have I honestly have no clue. I've never been here. I don't even know who we're talking about. As a child, she has a little girl. So that's what you were feeling last yeah. night. So Tessa has done this before, where you'll pick up on people or, or spirits before we even go to meet the people. Spot on. I've seen her do it. Like she was times. right on. Really? I mean, she even described the area where she was possibly murdered. Massive shout out to Tessa and Nick for coming along on this adventure. I know they have kids back at home and this was kind of a big deal for them to come out. I feel like Tessa is definitely invested into this story based on how she feels. I mean, you could just see the emotion. So we are actually on the interstate where Jane Doe was traveling eastbound. Based on what Tessa's feeling, Jane Doe was actually murdered on Route 86 where we're at right now. There's Chautauqua Lake. This is sort of a bonus. I wasn't even expecting to be able to take Tessa to the actual location where they found her body. She felt it was very important to the story of Jane Doe. I think the most important part about what we've connected is the fact that she has gotten a name. See what happens when we go to the actual location where we came some months ago. I think it was earlier this year, around March. The destination is on your left, I-86 East. Like driving, I was like, it's up here. <laughs> well, you were actually saying that? Yeah. Like it's up here? Yep. Well, so oh, she was back there, yeah. yeah. So here's the bridge. Because he was like, is this the bridge? When we were going over it, I was like, no, it's up there. <laughs> really? Yeah. So according to the pictures that I was able to dig up, the crime scene or, you know, where they found her body, I mean, you can see there's running water. That's a ditch. Yeah, it's up this way. It's up this way? Yeah. All right, I'll follow you. Hey. I think he came across this way. I felt like I was strangled. There is a country road up there. I went up there before. That's where I thought originally it was. Because I saw him dragging down this way. I would put money on the fact that it's somewhere they found her somewhere in this area here. But what I saw was him dragging her. And I got this really intense feeling of being choked, like strangled. So that could have been in the car. But then I heard, I saw her jump out. And I don't know if she ran down this way or if she was dragged, but there was a point where he dragged her. It's somewhere around here. But I definitely want to put a little mem like memorial marker for her one day. Did they ever find out what was what was written or like what that meant? Still to this day, it's a mystery. Because what she showed me is being in the truck, writing things down for him. So that would be her handwriting. And he, him telling her, write this down, write this down. I don't know what, it had no connection to her. And I saw them like getting into a physical altercation and he choked her. And they were somewhere along here. We're like very close to wherever it really started. And it I think started. it got to the point where she jumped out because I saw her jump out and start running and that's when he shot her. Because I saw the impact. Oh my God. See his face shut? I was asking for her to show me what he looked like. The interesting thing is that he was wearing a hat and the name that he gave her was not his actual name which makes it even harder for this oh. he's not from here he gave her a fake name i feel like i could draw him out like the way that she's showing it to me 
I feel like I could draw him. You could out. draw a sketch of him. Yeah, something like I see dark hair. I feel like he would have been darker complexion. So I don't know what ethnicity, but maybe darker. Something that maybe she felt she could recognize. Like, hey, I'm Italian. Maybe he was you Italian. Look. Maybe there was a connection to like the ethnicity, but he had like a tan skin. I'm yep. like freezing because she's making me feel like I'm freezing. It's and in December. Okay. She was cold. Like, she's making me feel cold, and I'm running, and I'm desperate to get away. Do you think maybe it happened in the middle of the night up there, and it then was she was running and maybe fell in the ditch, and that's where she passed away? Well, I don't think she fell. I think she was dragged. She was dragged. In. She was dragged. 100% she was dragged. And the reason I believe that is because when she showed me him choking her, she got away, but he shot her to slow her down. Oh. Remember what I said earlier about her being, like, half-clothed? Yeah. Yeah. There was a, there was another part to that, so I don't know if it happened like in the in the vehicle, like to where he was pulling on her, ripping clothes, and then he dragged her into the ditch. I mean, and this I is a pretty busy interstate. It had to have happened like in a real odd time of the night, yeah. somewhere like in the if I had to guess, maybe three, four in the morning or something like that. Like, are you feeling anything like that? I got the number two. So 2 a.m. somewhere around okay. there, 2 a.m. I feel like when she left, it was much earlier in the day. He might have gone a couple stops though, which is weird. So I, I don't know if there's like a couple stops she would have made and then this person, so she might have been with this person making a couple stops and now it's making more sense. Like with the things he was writing down, whatever he was doing, those numbers are associated with something he was doing. So. Some people say that it could be zip codes. Okay. But they still don't, they don't know what, they have not found a link. Well, she said he's not here. He's not here. He went back, so he's not from here. He's not from Do here. Do you think he may still be alive? Maybe an elderly man? She said earlier he had a record, remember that? He had like a record of some sort. That's what I want more info on. Like I keep asking her for more info on him because if he has a record, we might be able to pinpoint who he is. Him. Just through that, just through the records. Her name was like Serena or Sabrina. Like something that sounds very similar Serena. to Serena. What would be more a popular Italian name at that time? Would it be Serena versus Sabrina? I don't know, I'd have to look that up. Yeah. I have a cousin in Italy actually named Sabrina. Yeah, you, you do? Know. I would say Sabrina. Maybe Sabrina. I don't know though for the time period. I could find out. This kind of helps us out though because we can weed out a lot of missing persons. Yeah. And see if we could find somebody linked to a similar name. Yeah. Serena or Sabrina. Serena or Sabrina. As I pick up on these footprints now that we're in the location. Remember last night I heard the girl singing and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. It totally. Was last things that she heard as she was running. It makes me want to cry. Like, it makes me so emotional. Aww. Because she... She heard her daughter. I can tell she was picking up a lot of energy from the crime scene. She was very emotional. It was as if she was connected to Jane Doe even more and feeling her final moments. I even felt the energy radiating from her. It was heavy and sad. I get back and she couldn't. You know how like your light went just before your eyes? Yeah. It was like that. And so the humming that I heard last night was definitely her running and like she just heard her like, I gotta get back to her. It was that anxiety, that anticipation of a guy, I gotta get out of here, I gotta get back. I mean, she gave me a pretty clear vision of what happened to her. It was very tragic. She definitely has a daughter that's probably looking for her to this day and doesn't know what happened, so. If there's a daughter and she's still alive, trying to find she's her. She's gotta be find, looking for her mother. Maybe somebody between 50 and 65 years old. Yeah. That's how old they would be now. Yeah. And they wouldn't know their mother unless they were adopted. Weird, like I smell cigarette smoke. I smell the guy like smoking in the car and I see him with his hat on, like a trucker's hat of some sort and he had on a heavy heavy jacket heavy gloves almost like yeah like construction worker like those heavy jackets gloves i see him smoking he's got this hat on like a ball cap hat dark hair dark complexion what name did do you think he gave her like a bill like a billy billy, billy? bill billy maybe it was a nickname 
could be a nickname. I kept seeing him be like, call me Billy. He would uh, call me Billy. Maybe to hide his identity from her? Yeah. Because he had a record. Because he had a record. She was found right there? Well, off, yeah, well, this is what I'm picking up on. This area right here. Could she, yeah, he dragged her. Like she was, I saw her running, but I saw her up higher running. That's why I said it must have been, he must have been over here. Oh. Like driving this way. Because I saw him coming down and like drag her over here. What happens if he had like a snow plow and it was bad winter and it had snow on the ground and she jumped out and he, he was the only one around here because people would have seen that, right? I mean, it's, if it was late. It's busy. Maybe yeah, not. it's late. Yeah. But if it was snowing and stuff and there was snow on the ground. He, That's why I kind of feel like it may have happened late, like real late or yeah. real early. It's come farther than, the, like, it's no farther than right here because I see him being like, I have to do this and then get going. Like, he didn't go very far. But it's weird because, like I said, she gave me, like, what she saw. And I saw her just... You mentioned bridge. I did before say Before anything, yeah. I said there's a bridge and then the ditch. But I felt like I was on top of the bridge earlier. Makes more sense now. Oh. I'm on top of the bridge, but my body would be down here. Wow. Yeah, from the pictures that I saw from the 1980s, it it looked like this is where the investigation was happening because okay. you can see the bridge in the background and a bunch of cops parked here on the side of the road and it was right over here yeah. Now, let's yeah. try to sketch out what he looks like yeah take your time with it yeah yeah nothing could technically grow you know what i mean like it's right. it's a weird opening as if yeah it's like it's it's almost like you know where a body was and now it's just kind of placed there and it kind of has that residual energy and the residual energy just continues to manifest like, this yeah like it keeps it open it's weird it's like a, yeah it's just kind of sitting right there can you see in there yeah, yeah. It kind of grows back in that oh you're right spot. see what i'm saying yeah i was telling nick that if we were in florida i would say that this is like an alligator <laughs> hole but yeah we don't have, we don't have I, at least i don't think so they could survive right now but maybe in another month from now nah <laughs> Probably Sasquatch out here more so. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, That's crazy, man. I can tell this experience was overwhelming for Tessa. I told her to take some time and get back to me in a few days. The following day, she shared with me a dream she had, and that she was like an invisible spirit replaying the entire last moments play for play. She believes that Jane Doe was a victim of human trafficking, and the man that gave her a false name convinced her to trust him and get in the truck. They went from Canada to New York State. Jane Doe showed her everything. The guy in the truck would traffic women he would pick up, and she attempted to escape just before meeting her fate. She fought hard and didn't have much family but a daughter. She followed up later with a rendering she had an artist make for her of her vision of what she saw, which was the man responsible for what had happened to our Jane Doe. She also added that it was not a semi, but a small box truck identical to this one. I feel we are one step closer to solving this cold case with Tessa and Nick's help. Hey, by the way, Nick has an awesome show coming <laughs> soon. You want to tell him a little bit about it? Yeah, Death Walker. Death Walker is coming out, 40 episodes. It's going to be hitting in America really soon. We're excited about it. Just premiered Death Walker at the Riviera Theater, North Tonawanda, so look out for it. It's coming. Do you have a trailer for it that we I can do, share? I do, yeah. It's up, up right now. Check All out right. the trailer. Hey, here's the trailer right here. If I can just prove and show that physical attacks do happen from beyond, that would give us evidence that you do exist, that there is something than just dying. I've never experienced this before. More negative, something inhuman. I wanna see once and for all, can something actually attack the living? It's this dark energy, this malevolent force. You have a mark on your neck. That's what it feels like. It feels burned. It will absolutely physically harm you. It can attach itself to you. Some will get ill, throw up. They feel like they're being held down. I sense it. If something in here can physically harm the living, And I'm 
we're talking to the negative entity that's in here. We're going to find you. Then Tessa, if you want to see her in action, yeah. performing her gifts, she's got an upcoming show in Boca, right? Boca Raton, Florida, yeah. Live with the other side. It's at the Boca Black Box, September 11th, starting at 7 p.m. And I basically get up and I deliver messages to the audience. Big shout out to these amazing individuals, beautiful family. Make sure to show them some love. I'm going to leave links to their socials here in the description. Got to go for now before you leave. Give kiss. Peace. If you want to help as well, make your way to the Facebook page started by Detective Christy Lyon, who's worked countless hours trying to solve this case. In case you missed my first video covering this story, be sure to check that out as well.